Hi, I'm Scott Harvey, and you're participating with us in our first ever Scott Harvey TV live broadcast. How exciting. This is, uh, you know, we've always been known as a wine company that's been on the cutting edge of technology, and the more we can communicate directly with our customers, the more fun it is. And, the, and so we're going to do a tasting of the wines that, that we have sent out in our last wine club shipment. And uh, each one of you will have one wine from your shipment tasted here. And you can email into us questions, and I can answer them in real time, um, uh, to uh, Scott Harvey Wines. Or the, actually, the email is scottharveytv at scottharveywines.com. Or on Twitter, it would be hashtag Scott Harvey Wines. So let's get started and have a great time. We have wine club members from Minnesota, New York, Washington, Texas, Colorado, and of course California, and a couple from the, even from England here. A little bit before we start, though, I'd like to uh, tell you about our harvest. Uh, everybody's interested in the harvest, and we're we're in the last week of harvest right now, and it's been a great one. One of the uh, uh, I've been making wine for 40 years now, and uh, the best year uh, in those 40 years for me was uh, 1991. And this is a harvest very similar to 1991. So we're real excited about it. Uh, the wines, the wines are coming in at great, great acidity, great brightness, great color, and uh, um, and and with uh, uh, good ripeness without too much of uh, too high of an alcohol, which fits right into our old world style of making wine. So let's get started with the first wine, and this is Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, I'm going to pour a little more here. You can see our crew here has helped us uh, uh, taste this as we were getting ready. And this Sauvignon Blanc is made in uh, um, in a drier style. It's picked. I tend to pick it before most people pick their Sauvignon Blanc in Napa Valley. And I, I want a wine that talks to you. With all of these wines, I want wines that talk to you. And uh, I want the wine to say, I'm Sauvignon Blanc, I'm Napa Valley, I'm, uh, um, uh, I'm 2012 vintage. This wine actually was judged at the California State Fair this year, and it was rated um, in as the best white wine of Napa Valley by the California State Fair. Um, so if, they, if you guys have any questions about the Sauvignon Blanc, email them in to us again at scottharveytv at scottharveywines.com or at uh, hashtag scottharveywines on Twitter and, uh, and I'll answer the questions for you. But this wine has 92% uh, Sauvignon Blanc, 5% Napa Valley Pinot Gris, which actually comes from Pope Valley, which is a valley just over the hill from Napa, but it's, all, it's still considered part of Napa Valley and 3% Mendocino Riesling, which is another one of our wines that we make. So the wine's got a nice aroma. It, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's what I call an aroma-rich wine rather than a bouquet-rich wine. Bouquet are, are characters that you pick up from the winemaking process. Aroma are characters that you pick up from the, the, the vineyard itself and the variety. And we like to make aroma-rich wines because we like our wines to talk to you. A little bit of straw, a little bit of melon, kind of a cantaloupe character. Dry on the palate. And, uh, um, and it leaves, after on the finish, it leaves the palate just dry enough even the wine's completely dry, but just so so you want it, so you're still thirsty and you want to take another sip. So great wine for food, great wine, as we say in California, for the hot tub, and uh, and uh, and uh, just great wine to sit on the porch. So this was a, again double gold at the California State Fair and best of region, best white wine of Napa Valley. Now the new vintage is uh, in the fermenter. It just stopped fermenting. And uh, uh, again, we're making the same uh, aroma-rich style wine, and we're really excited about it. So from the Sauvignon Blanc, we'll move on to another Napa wine, which is, if you notice, all of the Napa wines have the Jana label on them. Jana's my wife. 
And I figured, you know, my name's on these wines. We better, I, I better uh, put her name on on one too. So <clears throat> these are all vineyards that I've worked with from a number of different wineries through the past for the last 30 years. And um, and so what we decided when Jana and I started this company and we brought these vineyards with us, all the vineyards from where I come from, Amador County, will have the Scott Harvey label, and all the vineyards from Napa Valley and from the coastal area, um, Mendocino as well, will have the Jana label on it. So so we'll start with the, the Zinfandel. This is an old vineyard. And it is, uh, it's located in the Calistoga area of California, northern or, uh, Napa Valley. Northern uh, Napa Valley tends to be warmer than southern Napa Valley, so it does better with Zinfandel. Where the, the southern Napa Valley does better with Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, and Cabernet does really well in the middle. And the reason is, is that the bay, the San Francisco Bay, uh, cools down the southern end of Napa Valley, and as you get up <laughs> into the Box Canyon area where, of Calistoga, it heats up. And so Zinfandel does better in a hotter region. This is the Deneo Vineyard. Um, Andrew Deneo is a, a great uh, uh, guy that speaks four languages. He's a, a lawyer. Uh, he was born in Italy, and he does international law. And he has this old vineyard that he tends in the old world style, the old Italian way of head pruned vines. And it just makes a beautiful um, uh, uh, Napa Valley Zinfandel. And again, if you look at it, notice it's not black. Zinfandel does not have to be black. Um, in today's world, so much Zinfandel comes out of the Central Valley that's made in that new world style. And, uh, um, and that New World style is a style of wine that has very high alcohol, uh, very low acidity, and it's kind of what we call a fruit bomb. And, it, and it, it drinks well by itself, but it doesn't drink well with food. And since I'm a European-trained winemaker, I really like to make wines with food and uh, that taste well with food. When Jana and I will, uh, uh, when I put these blends together, I blend the wine. And uh-oh, we have one other wine club member here in the audience who wants some wine. But anyway, um, so you always ask what food goes best with these wines. And, of course, with the Sauvignon Blanc, I like it for breakfast, actually, with, uh, with a frittata or a, a fruit salad. Um, the, uh, the Zinfandel, of course, you know, I, I make the blend up in the lab, and then I, Jana and I cook together all the time. And, uh, um, and we have this wine with dinner, and she has a great palate. Women tend to have better palates than men anyway. And, uh, um, and if the wine doesn't wash the fats out of your mouth so that the next bite of food tastes like the first bite, then I go back and keep blending. And most winemakers leave their wine at the winery. They don't take it home. I think it's a real mistake. And you'll notice in the as wine club members, you're drinking our wines, so you'll notice that how these wines are very seriously and methodically handcrafted to go with food. And, uh, and thanks to Jana's palate, you're getting some pretty nice wines. So nice spicy Zinfandel. It says I'm Napa Valley. Um, it says uh, um, that I'm... Uh, 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 from the 2011 vintage, it's just pretty Zinfandel, just pretty Napa Valley Zinfandel. Always, there, well, we produce both Zinfandels from Napa Valley and from Amador County, and I, I compare them as the difference between Cognac and Armagnac. Uh, Cognac is a much prettier wine, and Napa wines are much prettier, but Armagnac, which I actually prefer to drink, is much earthier. It, it's it tells you where it comes from more, and it, it's it's more better with lamb and so forth. So so this Zinfandel, as opposed to our Napa Zins, is is better with more prepared, uh, more delicate dishes. Where the uh, Amador Zinfandel or the next one we'll try, the Barbera, is better with like a rustic lamb or or something like that. So anyway, nice cherry berry character. It's 100% from the Deneo Vineyard, has a pH of 3.59. Um, you'll find all of our wines are below 3.6, uh, and, that, and that's, the, that's the window when you go below 3.6, you have red fruits in your wine, like fresh cherries, and if you get above 3.6, you end up going more into the, the uh, New World style, 
where those fresh cherries would be changed into cherry pie, you know, uh, kind of cook, cooked fruit characters. So, I think I'll just drink and stop talking. I, I like uh, I like the wine so much. But anyway, actually, we're gonna we, we also have some giveaways on this. And as we go through this, think about what you're seeing. And since it's our first time and we've never done this before, um, uh, think about uh, what how we could do it better. Because you can send us emails and say uh, um, you know write jot down. You know, it'd be better if you combed your hair or zip up your zipper or whatever. But uh, um, but uh, uh, let us know uh, what you think, and then the next time in early December when we do this again, we'll incorporate your ideas. But what we're going to do is a giveaway. Actually, after every two wines, we're tasting six wines, and we've already the props are already here. We have our our uh, thing, and our first giveaway is a Scott Harvey hat. Look good. Okay, so we're going to pull one of these out. These are all the people that are participating. Oh, I don't know if, if this gal is going to want a hat, but this it's for Melanie Lorraine. So, Melanie, you've won a Scott Harvey hat. If, uh, if you don't want the hat, email us, and we'll send you a T-shirt instead. And uh, so that's our first giveaway. And, uh, and, and again, wine club members taking care of that. So let's move on to the next wine, Barbera. Barbera is my favorite red wine to make. Every winemaker has their favorite red and white wine. And uh, my favorite red wine is Barbera. And the reason is, is that it's the most successful wine for the area where I come from, Amador County. Um, and everybody likes success. So obviously, um, uh, that's why I like Barbera the best. Amador County is known for old vine Zinfandel from vineyards that date back to the Gold Rush era and so forth. Up, oh, we got some more folks that want some vino here. And when you think of Barbera, Barbera is a great variety that comes from northern Italy, from the Piedmont, from Piedmonte. And in Italian, Piedmonte means foothill. And the Piedmont is the foothills of a very fast, young-growing mountain range, the Sierra Nevada, or the Sierra Nevada, the uh, the Alps. And uh, um, and when you think of Amador County, it's the same thing. It's the foothill region of a very fast-growing mountain range, the Sierra Nevada. And they're both huge granite monolithic uplifts due to continental drift. And uh, they both had decomposed granite soils coming off the sides of them. And so because of where Barbera comes from, it does extremely well in Amador County. The difference between the two appellations is that Piedmonte is very close to a marine influence, which would be coming up out of Genoa, the Mediterranean, and Piedmont gets a lot of fog. And the best variety in the Piedmont, or the variety that generates the most money for the farmer, is, is named after that fog. It's called Nebbiolo. And it produces the Barolos and the Barbarescos and so forth that, uh, that are famous for that region. Barbera is the second tier variety of Piedmont. It's a sun-loving variety. And because there's so much fog, it doesn't get the best vineyard sites. The Nebbiolo gets the best vineyard sites. I've tried to grow Nebbiolo in Amador County. You know, and if it doesn't taste like Barolo, it just kind of pisses you off. So, uh, so you know, Barbera, though, because Amador County is further away from its marine influence. The Pacific Ocean is too far away to give us fog during the growing season. So Barbera thrives being a sun-loving variety in the same foothill-type region in Amador County. I really think it is the best Barbera region in the world and in, in will surpass Piedmont or already has uh, as far as quality goes. And uh, so I'm very, very excited about it. This is a vineyard I planted in 1986 with my grandfather and father-in-law. And, uh, um, and in uh, 1997, it was rated the best barbarian in America by the Wall Street Journal. And in 2003, it was sent to Piedmont, or Piedmonte in Italy, and it was rated third best in the world. So uh, it really, really has a future, and uh, we're really excited about it. So, so enjoy it. 
So we have, a, we have a question on the board here. Bill from California asks, what is the difference between your Reserve Barbera and the Mountain Selection? I always say 10 bucks, um, but uh, <laughs> that's not what, what the marketing director, Jana, my wife, likes to hear. But, but uh, in actuality, the wines are made exactly the same way. We use the same cooperage. We, we use the same fermentation style, the same type of yeast. The only difference really is the vineyard. And uh, we pay twice as much for these grapes as we pay for the Mountain Selection Barbera. And uh, we just, uh, they're just uh, in vineyard sites that uh, uh, produce lower tonnage, less grapes. So the, the, the grower gets the same amount of money per acre, but the grapes cost twice as much. And, it, and the struggle of the vines really produces this higher quality um, that, uh, that really makes the, the wine worth. On a, uh, ten bucks more a bottle. Okay, so next one we're going to go to is our Syrah, and this is this is our Mountain Selection label, and uh, this is our uh, these are our workhorse wines. They're our everyday drinking wines. Uh, the the white labels are our Reserve, um, and again you'll see it says on there JNS Reserve. And again, that's because Jana and I have had it with dinner, and we, and it's gotten past our palates and so forth. Same thing happens with the red labels too. But we call them Mountain Selection because we're proud that this is a mountain appellation that Amador County uh, really has that high elevation character in its wines that really show through. And that the and mountain uh, wines tend to have kind of a racier, uh, finer tannin to them that really uh, um, show through. And this is made in a typical Syrah style that you would see in the Rhone area. It has a, l a little bit of reduction in the, um, and the Syrah tends to have that. And the reduction at first, when the wine's first bottled, um, it can be a little off-putting actually. Um, a little bit uh, kind of like a boiled egg kind of character. But that reduction as it ages into the wine, and you see this in great Rieslings from the Mosel uh, in the Rheingau of Germany as well, uh, ages into a real velvety type character. But it takes a good year of bottle age for, for it to turn from that, uh, that kind of boiled egg character to that, that real velvet character. Wines that are bottled with a little a reduction on purpose are wines that are made to age for a very long period of time. Uh, this is a good 20 to 30 year wine because of because of the way it's bottled, and that it turns into a a, a real deep uh, cherry kind of character on the on the nose. Now that would go good with a nice steak. There's a lot of uh, a, a lot of beef and a lot of lamb that's grown in Amador County, and you always match the wines with the local foods. And uh, I always buy a, a, from kids I went to high school with uh, uh, my animals, what we say, on the hoof or alive, and then we we have them slaughtered and so forth. Kind of freaked my wife out when uh, first met her, but uh, but now she loves that kind of that kind of food, and it really goes great with a wine that's made like this. It really shows the flavor of Amador in the flavor of the wine. So Rob from Washington asks, I'm reading off the teleprompter here. You're welcome. Uh, for the holidays, what does this wine go with? This wine, this, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's a Syrah, but uh, um, I would say it, it goes great, again, with lamb, with roasted, barbecued, seared meats, uh, um, something like that, um, because it just washes it down. You know, it just, it just washes those fats down so that that next bite of, of meat tastes like that first bite. So I would say good barbecue uh, fare. And then we have Mark... What is the difference between Shiraz and Syrah? We get asked that a lot. There is no difference between Shiraz and Syrah. Um, the, uh, the main thing is, is that in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, they have used the word Shiraz um, if for the word Syrah, and it's become popular there. So traditionally, Shiraz wines 
are wines that come from New Zealand and uh, in Australia and South Africa. And then uh, Syrah is tended to be used more in the northern hemisphere, so it would be France and, and California and so forth. Um, although uh, you will see it cross-used, uh, especially people who are marketing less expensive products, uh, you'll see less expensive uh, Syrah coming out of southern France with the name Shiraz on it uh, because they think they can hit a, a broader market. Um, the wines from all of these areas are all worth trying. What I want is to taste a wine that says, I'm from the Barossa Valley of Australia, I'm from Amador County, or I'm from here. I want wines to, I want the wine, I want to taste the world when I have wine with my dinner. And uh, um, so whether you use the name Syrah or Shiraz, it, it really doesn't matter, but, uh, um, but uh, they're, they're both the same variety. So we're ready for another raffle. Got to have some of that great wine first. So next is a t-shirt. And uh, uh, this one's extra large, but we can um, ship you whatever size you want. This is a men's t-shirt. And uh, let me uh, pull out one of these cards. Kathy Gascue. Ask you. So I, actually, I think we'll do the uh, women's T-shirt since it's uh, Kathy. Since that's the next one, and this is Kathy. This is what the T-shirt looks like. So I hope you enjoy it. Look good on me. <laughs> and uh, um, it says, uh, "Nice legs and soft, luscious tannins." So Janet displays, which she does. I can agree with that. Um, so anyway. Um, let's go on to the next wines. So the next wine are, are two California Appalachian wines. Actually, they're a very high percentage of Amador County uh, grapes in both of those wines. Um, but there are Incinerator and One Last Kiss. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning them together is because they start out as the same blend. Um, when I put this blend together, uh, it's where I get to be very creative because I get to blend Zinfandel and Syrah and Petite Syrah and and uh, and a little bit of our Forte, which we call our port, and uh, um, and and so we're making basically two versions of the same wine. They both start out as the same blend, and one it ends up being 0.8 percent residual sugar, which is the Incinerator label. Here you can see the poster on the wall. And so this wine is still twice or three or even four times drier than a lot of the New World Zinfandels that you see on the market that you pay $60 a bottle for. Um, this is 0.8% residual sugar. Um, you'll get some great wines, uh, although they're very sweet, 4%, 2 to 4% in the New World style of Zinfandel. And, uh, which I think are very well made, and there's a there's a market for those wines, but they don't go in our portfolio because they're they're not food wines, and we're European in style. We we like to uh, promote the old world style, but this has just enough residual sugar to soften the wine, to make it uh, more user friendly, uh, and to accentuate the the different varieties that are in the wine, uh, to really to move it along. And uh, so it's a, it's really kind of a fun wine. Um, it's it's a the original blend of a previous wine that I used to make at a previous winery that now sells four million cases a year, um, which I probably should mention. But uh, um, but anyway, it's uh, it's really one of our fun wines, and we really enjoy it. It's 80% Zinfandel, 7% Petit Syrah. The Zinfandel is Amador County. The Petit Syrah is Napa Valley. Um, it's 7% Syrah, which is this Syrah here, and it's 6% Forte, which is our port, which we're not tasting today. Maybe we'll taste it in December when you come back to uh, view again. Um, and our Forte is a, uh, is a port. It's a, it's a port style wine that we make in the European style where we ferment the, the European Portuguese varieties uh, uh, and then uh, press them and then fortify them off the skins and then we use that forte 
to as the as the sweetener in these wines, so that you're getting uh, uh, the natural character. And you'll see if you see, if you go to our website and you look up our spec sheets, which you can on any one of these wines, it'll say six percent forte, where this one is fourteen percent forte, the Ultimo Basil. In uh, um, so it uh, it it's a six the forte is at about six percent residual sugar, and that's. Uh, um, so what we get. So we have Julie from England asked, what, what the heck are the old world, new world styles? How does it affect me? Well, they both affect, will affect you the same way in the end. Um, <laughs> but the new world style will affect you much faster because the alcohol is much, much higher. And the uh, old world style, again, is that it, you know Europeans drink wine with food. And the, you know, in Europe, wine is considered a food. It's treated as a food. You can ship it around the country in the mail, like a, like a cupcake. Um, but you can't do that here in the United States because of you know uh, the prohibition period, and and it's a taboo. And it's really unfortunate because you, as our customer base, have to go th jump through all these darn hoops to uh, to just enjoy a food, a bottle of wine. But uh, um, but it, again, they uh, um, you know it's just it's just made we make them more in this uh, in this old world style that has very high acidity. The pH uh, point that that goes between old world and new world is about three point six, and that's getting technical. So you probably don't need to know that. But below three six, uh, it's fresh fruit characters. Above three six, it's cooked fruit characters. So when you buy one of those those big 16% alcohol Zinfandels, you and you taste it, you know it tastes good. It you can chew on it, but it's it's like jam. It's like prunes. It's like plums. Where if you if you take the same vineyard and pick it earlier and make an uh, an old world style wine. It's like fresh cherries and and fresh blueberries, and it's uh, it has the acidity that goes with the food. It doesn't overpower the food; goes with the food. So that's the difference between the two. So that, I like this one. I get a little bit of that licorice, a little bit of anise, um, a little bit of the French oak that it was aged in. We use all French oak varieties, uh, or French oak barrels. Uh, I'll use some Hungarian as well, but no American oak. I, I don't like the f uh, the flavor of American oak in our wines. Uh, American oak is what's used to make bourbon, and when you think of the flavor of bourbon, it tastes good by itself, but, but that sweet bourbon character is not what we want in the wines. We want more of that uh, kind of racy type of oak that you get from Europe. We just brought in 450 barrels from France uh, that we're trying to figure out where to put right now in the winery. Um, we're asked again uh, by Connie, uh, what foods pair well with Incinerator? Um, and uh, I would say uh, pizza, tomato-based dishes, uh, barbecue again with uh, with a barbecue sauce. The sweet, you know, barbecue sauce has some residual sugar in it, so it matches the 0.8% residual sugar in this wine. So let's move on to the Ultimo Basil. So the Ultimo Basil is the same blend, but it has the uh, um, it has 2% residual. You want the incinerator? Okay. Uh oh, we got a whole crew. They're getting thirsty. <laughs> you can see we have a big audience here. Although the same hands are coming up if you can see them on camera. So this is Ultimo Basil. 2% residual sugar. The difference is that it has 72% Zinfandel, where the incinerator is 80%, and then the, the Petit Syrah and the Syrah are the same percentages, but then the port goes up to 12%, or the Forte, and, the, and that it just makes it 2% residual sugar. And, you know, for, 
for people that aren't used to uh, um, uh, wines that are bone dry, this is a good way to, to get into enjoying red wine with your dinner and so forth. And uh, it's fresh and it has a lot of cherry berry character. We just had a question up there, but it, it left. But anyway, when it comes back, I'll answer it. Ultimo Beso, we have a, a, America has a very, very large Latin population now. Um, I grew up with a large group of, uh, of Latin speakers, and so we, we think it's really important to uh, 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 make wines that, that uh, address the, the total populace of the United States. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, I used to live in Cuba, so you had the, or not in Cuba, in Miami, you had the Cuban Latins and, uh, and the Puerto Ricans in New York and, and the Mexican Latin population in California who we work with. They're very important to grow parts of our company. But uh, uh, so the Ultimo Bezo, I think, is a wine that, uh, that works with these, which, which means the uh, last kiss. We also have a wine called First Kiss, Primero Bezo, which is a white wine um, to go along with it. So John asks, does using a, cork, a screw cap versus a cork affect the wine in any way? Yes, it does. Um, the, uh, uh, I still think the best closure is a cork, uh, but I sure do like when I'm out in a picnic or something uh, to be able to just screw the cap off and not have to worry about a corkscrew. Uh, in making the wine, we, we make it a little differently, if, or finish it a, a little differently if we're going to put it in a, in a uh, uh, screw cap, um, because the screw cap is actually a more uh, complete seal than a cork. The, the cork will leak a little bit of air back and forth. Actually, the cork has air in it, and when it's compressed and put in the bottle, that little bit of oxygen is pushed into the wine over about a, uh, a one-year period, and it affects the wine uh, during that period. And that's why this Syrah that I said had a little bit of the reduction character, it's a little bit of air that's in the cork that's being pushed out that, that turns that reduction into that velvet character. If I bottled that wine in a screw cap, it would stay that way and never change. Um, so, so that's you know we have to consider that when we're doing it. But, but wines that are more user friendly, this wine with two percent residual sugar, we want people to be able to just enjoy it right away. Both wines will age a very long period of time um, because both seals in today's world are are very good. Where in the old days the the screw cap leaked too much, but it doesn't anymore. It's it's very well made. We have MJ Graves says, tell us about terroir in your wines. Terroir means everything that affects that vine uh, um, in, in the finished wine. Um, so it's the slope, it's the way it's pruned, it's the rootstock it sits on, it's the vintage, it's, it's everything about the aroma in the wine. So again, in our Zinfandels, we want terroir to come out, where in the old, in the new world style, they don't care about terroir at all because they're making the wine in the winery. They want you know to to have this plummy, overripe character. You know, raisins are raisins. It doesn't matter whether they come from Napa Valley or from the Central Valley, and they want. Uh, uh, so, so terroir no longer becomes a factor. You know, I've been judging the California State Fair now for 30 years, and in 30 years ago, it was much easier for me to say, this is a Cabernet from Napa Valley, and this is a Zinfandel from Amador County, where today, I can be given a wine, and because they're made, they're not paying attention to terroir, they're letting the grapes get overripe, it, I can't. It's harder for me to say this is a Napa Valley Cabernet or, or an Amateur County Zinfandel or a Lodi Zinfandel because they all taste the same. So if we're going to talk about terroir, we have to make old world style wines because the two go together. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. So Justin P. asks, some of your blends list mixed port varieties and others forte as components. Are they both the same? Yes, they are. Our forte is made from mixed uh, Portuguese varieties 
and uh, and so sometimes we 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 uh, I list it as Forte. I won't use the word port because um, because it's a place name, Porto, and uh, just like our sparkling wine, I won't call it Champagne. Uh, I call it uh, sparkling wine, and uh, for the same reason, we won't call our our Forte port, our fortified wine, and uh, so we use the French term Forte, which means fortified. Um, the uh, American uh, um, label people, uh, we have, all our labels are approved by the federal government. Of course, right now they're not approving any labels because they're shut down, although they still want us to mail in our taxes. But, but anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, they will not allow me to use the word fortified on a label for whatever reasoning. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. So we use the French term forte. Uh, which means the same thing, and I figured, well, they're probably not bilingual, and uh, so they approved it. But anyway, so that's where the word forte comes from. So we've gone through all the wines. We have one more raffle, the men's T-shirt. And again, you can change these out between any of the three. And we'll, we'll pull a, a name here. And this is Alan Hegenberger. So, Alan, let us know what, what size you want, and uh, we'll, we'll send out the T-shirt. And it's uh, Scott drinks well with others, and I, I can attest to that. Just come on by the house someday if you're in Napa Valley, and we'll, uh, we'll drink well together. Anyway, here you go. Oh, need some more vino. Barbara? So that brings us to uh, to the end of our tasting. So any of these wines that you want to reorder in your wine club shipment on a four bottle uh, order or more, the shipping is free until October 25th. So um, get order your wines and uh, you'll have them for the holidays, which would be great. And uh, um, also we have a referral service. Uh, if any of you, as I mentioned earlier, refer uh, us or bring us a, a one of your friends as a wine club member, you'll have $25 off on your next wine club shipment. Um, and then, uh, uh, again, if you have any ideas um, uh, about how to improve this, you know, if you want me to talk in a higher voice or lower voice or something, um, um, go ahead and send it in. And then also... Uh, this broadcast is available for you to re-look uh, at if you want to uh, do it with uh, some of your friends when you open one of these bottles of wine at home, and you can do that on YouTube and just look for Scott Harvey Wines. So thank you for participating all around the United States and England, and we love to see you again. Bye.